These are some of the best recurring jokes in the best place to be. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious Disney Channel running gags. For this list, we're recounting some of the funniest recurring jokes and gags from some of our favorite live action and animated Disney Channel programs. If you've missed out on any of these shows, there will be spoilers. I should tell her the whole ugly truth. How I was unjustly thrown in detention, locked up with the bad kids. She'll take my side. I'm her firstborn. Number 10. Get em, get em, Gravity Falls. Dead, dead, dead. Get em, get em. Of all the weirdos running around Gravity Falls, this one is probably the perkiest. Whenever a brawl breaks out, you're sure to see Tyler Cutebooker the town's enthusiasm enthusiast, cheering for the mayhem from the sidelines and exclaiming his catchphrase. Get him, get him! This is too fun to look for in every episode Tyler appears in, and also acts as a showcase of what kind of character he is. An eager little oddball who encourages others no matter what insane scrape they get into. What are you gonna do with me, Tyler? Get him! Get him! It's also a fitting slogan for when he runs for mayor of the falls, inspiring the town to get the best out of life. Local enthusiasm enthusiast, Tyler Cutebooker. Got it. Number nine, Pull the Lever, the Emperor's New School. Pull the lever, crunk. Wrong lever! Who didn't love this gag from the Emperor's New Groove? Yzma orders Kronk to pull the lever to her secret lab, only to pull the wrong lever, which ends disastrously for her. Yzma then pulls the right lever, and the two rocket down a wild roller coaster to their base. Please remain seated and keep your arms and legs in at all times. Like most of the movie's other iconic jokes, this gag was brought back to life in the Emperor's New School in almost every episode, and made hysterically unpredictable. There is no telling what will happen when someone pulls the wrong lever, and Yzma's roller coaster rarely maintains the same design twice. The unforeseeable execution of this gag gives viewers something unexpected to look forward to in almost every episode. Pull the lever, Kronk! <laughs> the wrong lever! You know, you really should label these things. Number 8. The Lamp, Wizards of Waverly Place. I'm open! I'm open! <laughs> What are you going to tell your mother? Face it, when you have kids who are wizards, a little wear and tear is expected. Unfortunately, Teresa's bookshelf lamp ends up taking the brunt of magical abuse. It almost always ends up smashed to pieces, usually by some magic mishap or misfired spell. And we all know how Teresa feels about magic. My lamp! Luckily, the Russos seem to have a bottomless amount of replacement lamps, or they're just really good at fixing the current one. With how often this poor prop gets broken, it'd be weird if it somehow became immune to magic blasts. But one way or another, that lamp is destined to repeatedly come crashing down. How many times does this lamp have to break for you guys to get the message? Well, if the message is ugly lamps are easy to break, I think we got it. Number seven, Launchpad's Crash Landings, DuckTales franchise. Launchpad, what's the matter? I'm finished, wiped out. Without Mr. McD, my career, like my helicopter, is crashed. Speaking of crashing down, good old Launchpad McQuack. While the lights aren't always on upstairs, his heart is always in the right place. See the ground? Ground? I can't even see the sky. I don't know if we're falling down or up. Down, down! We're falling down, you hear it? Right into a boiling lake. A boiling lake? We are doomed! The same can't be said about his piloting skills. Honestly, it's a miracle Launchpad manages to get his plane into the air, as he'll usually end up getting into a literal crash landing. Thankfully, no one gets hurt too badly. Of course, it's not just aerial travel. Any vehicle Launchpad gets behind the wheel of is almost destined to crash. It'd probably be more shocking if he somehow didn't end up in a wreck. Gee, my first crash. It was a beauty, wasn't it? His piloting improves a little once he starts working with Darkwing Duck, but some things never change for this lovable doofus. Thankfully, he works cheap. Family truly is the greatest adventure of all oh, no, the ground! Number 6. 
nearly busted. Phineas and Ferb. Those boys are always up to something. And it's bringing me to tears, because just before you get home, it always just magically disappears. This was hard to pick, since this show has more running gags than we know what to do with. You've got to see what Phineas and Ferb are doing. They're building a roller coaster. Candace, you've already used that one. Whenever Phineas and Ferb are in the middle of their big ideas, their older sister Candace has plans of her own to expose their crazy schemes to their mom. Can you give me a hand in packing this stuff, Candace? I'm not gonna help you, but as soon as I figure out what you're up to, I'm calling mom. Okay, say hi for me. Unfortunately for Candace, the boys are always one step ahead of her, and she ends up looking like a lunatic, which isn't too far off considering how batty the boys make her. I'll get ya, I'll get ya, and when I do, you're gonna be busted. It's hilariously frustrating watching her try and fail to bust her brothers. She'd probably be happier if she went along with their hijinks instead, since the only way she could ever expose them is in her dreams. I worry about you sometimes, Candace. Number 5. Guess who got a job at X? Austin and Allie. So I pulled a little disappearing act and went to visit my best friend Allie at Sonic Boom. I mean, isn't that what magicians do? Think you have problems holding a job? In almost every episode, Trish can be found working at a new job, but she can never hold one for too long, either because she quits or due to her incompetence as an employee. This was a really hard job to lose. Oh, who am I kidding? It was a really easy job to lose. I'm pretty good at losing jobs. On the plus side, she has plenty of material for her resume, and she practically wrote the book on firing someone. You would have think I could have seen the writing on the mug, but I never saw it coming until it was set in ceramic. Can you believe they even made me make my own firing mug? However, there is one job Trish manages to keep and take seriously, being Austin's manager. Even if he does fire Trish, and he has, she'll make a comeback because she cares too much about her friends to let the only career she enjoys slip away. Then when I got back to work, abracadabra, I'm fired. <sighs> it's just shocking, totally shocking. <laughs> Number four. Ron Stoppable's Pants, Kim Possible. Wait up! Ah! He may be bumbling at times, but Ron Stoppable is as dependable as they come. If only his pants were as reliable. Somehow, usually through some unexpected twist of fate, Ron ends up either losing his pants or he's left in nothing but his boxers. <laughs> Oh man, even in Japan. <laughs> it's happened so often that Ron gets pretty numb about it, and yet it still gets tiresome when it seems like the gag will never end. <laughs> oh man, not now. While it can be seen as buffoonery, it's just a part of what adds to Ron's charm that makes him the goofy, loyal sidekick and partner that Kim knows and loves. That and we're pretty sure not even a belt can help Ron at this point. Way to go, KP! Just saving the world. Um, Ron? Oh man, that's so tanks! Number three, The Vaz, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. <gasps> Down in the lobby of the Tipton Hotel, an expensive looking Vaz sits on a lone table. It was perfectly safe from harm until Zack and Cody moved in. Since then, the Vaz has been just waiting to be knocked over thanks to the twin shenanigans. Thankfully, someone, usually Mosby, is always there to miraculously catch it before it can crash on the floor. <laughs> However, in the finale of the original series, it finally happens. The vase is accidentally knocked to the floor, and no one catches it. It's almost symbolic since that was the last time most of the cast was seen at the hotel before they hit the seven seas in the sweet life on deck. Everyone move back, move back, he doesn't want to be crap. Oh. I'm not cleaning that up. Number two, sweet niblets, Hannah Montana. Oh, sweet niblets. Ruh -ruh. Have you ever wanted to cuss out loud but you can't because you're on the Disney Channel? Yeah, us too. Fortunately, Hannah Montana developed the perfect phrase for such an event. Pecan crunchies, sweet nutty niblets. This funny little southern catchphrase is universally said throughout the show, mostly with Miley's family, usually when anyone needed to air their frustration or curse themselves when things go asunder, or in the rare instances when something goes terrifically. I would just like to thank you so much for this award. <laughs> I mean this award. Oh, sweet niblets. 
Unquestionably, the best occasion to utter those two little words is when anyone, especially Miley, finds themselves in a world full of trouble. Which, let's face it, happens way too often when you're living a double life in a Disney sitcom. Explain to me why your license says... Hannah Montana. Oh, that's just because... Sweet niblets. Where can one sign up for a job as an enthusiasm enthusiast? Asking for a friend. Let's look at some recurring honorable mentions before we get to number one. Say my name. Say it! Uh, it's, uh, uh. I'm not scared of some birds. Here's one for the homies. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, y'all wanna play rock? Oh, Oscar, please, don't provoke them. Just be calm. Honey, if I was any calmer, I'd be dead. <laughs> hey, Dad, big favor. Don't try to be funny with Josh, because he ain't funny. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Oh, snap! That's so Raven. You know what I think? This whole psychic thing was a setup just to make me look bad. You got me. <laughs> or maybe that's what you want me to think. Oh, snap, you got me again. With how hilariously Raven delivers both catchphrases, it was hard to pick between this and You nasty! Ultimately, we settled for her most iconic declaration to date. This little outburst is appropriate for any occasion, whether exclaimed in shock, amazement, realization, or if trouble is not too far behind. Which is especially appropriate if you can see the future. Oh, snap! Even after the original show's ending, the quote remains relevant today because, admit it, we've all had our little oh snap moments when things take a turn for the unexpected. On top of all Oh snap, for real? Naturally, like any iconic catchphrase, it's hard to keep this gag down for good. Which is why when Raven made a comeback in Raven's home, the phrase came back with her. Mom? Oh, snap! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.